So you're thinking about putting some Florida native plants in your yard and you want to go and buy some firebush, which is a great choice. Whether it's to attract butterflies, save the bees, help the environment, or just reduce costs and create a more drought tolerant yard, this is an excellent plant for your yard. But you may have heard, there is a non-native firebush out there in the stores waiting for you to buy it. When you're trying to buy a native, I know, right? Well, today on Wild Florida, we're going to talk about how to identify and tell the difference between a native Florida firebush and a non-native. Hi, I'm Jacqueline, the Wild Floridian, and welcome to my mini series on firebush. This is part of a greater series all about Florida native plants. Why Florida native plants? Well, the more we know about Florida native plants, the more we'll love Florida and then the better we'll take care of our wildlife. See, if you want to start from the beginning of this series, go ahead and click on this card right here or you can wait till the end and a card will appear in one of these four corners. Okay, let's get into it. Let's talk about how do you tell the difference between Florida's native firebush and the non-native type. So we've got to get into this. See, why do we need to know the difference between native and non-native? Well, the first is it's just you wanted to buy native, right? So you don't want to go to the store thinking you're buying native and then go, oh, whoops, it's not native. So that's number one. And by the way, just to let you know, most of the big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and a lot of nurseries, the type of firebush that they're going to carry is not the native type, which is why we're going to get into all the different ways that you can tell the difference. The other reason is, is that if you remember in the last episode, we talked about the fact that there's medicinal qualities. Well, what we're finding is, is that, um, those don't seem to be translating into the non-native type. So when it comes to burns and bites and using that medicinal quality, the fact of the matter is it doesn't seem to be translating the non-native type. And then the next reason, well, this is just more based on my observation because, you know, the reason I wanted to let you know this stuff is because, yeah, I've made this mistake before. I have the non-native version in my yard. I have a lot of native one now too. But one of the things that I noticed the biggest difference was is that the pollinators, right? If we want to get bees and butterflies and maybe even hummingbirds in our yard, well, it seems like they prefer the native type. Why? I don't know. And I'm not just saying like, oh, pollinators always prefer the native type. No, they don't. Because I definitely have put a whole bunch of Florida native plants up front that were for pollinators. And all the bees went and hung out around my green onions that were blossoming. Why? I don't know. They just seem to like it better. So I'm not just saying pollinators always like native plants. That's not it. But when it came to this plant, I distinctly noticed that even though there were some that were 10, 15 feet apart, they went to the native type for whatever reason. And probably the biggest reason that we should consider putting in native plants versus the imposter or non-native versions is that the reality is, is that our depth of knowledge about Florida native plants is not very deep. The reality is, is that our ecosystem is completely unique in the world. There is no place like Florida. And so because of that complexity and our general lack of knowledge, if we lose out on our native plants, we really don't know all the things that we're gonna lose. So continuing to create these native plant corridors through our own yards is a fantastic way to help the environment, our wildlife, and our habitats. Okay, so enough about the reasons why we should have Florida native plants and should plant the native fighter bush. Let's talk about how we can go and figure out whether it's the Florida native plant that we want, right? Right. Okay, step one, if you didn't wanna watch any further, the easiest thing you could do is go and buy it from what we would call the FNN. A. Is that too many ends? I don't remember. Florida Native Nursery Association. These are nurseries that specifically are part of Florida Native Plant Society and have a greater understanding of Florida native plants. This alone would decrease your odds significantly of getting the wrong type of firebush and are typically one of the only places where you can get native firebush, native Florida firebush. The next thing that you want to look at is the name, right? And one of the best ways that we usually protect ourselves from buying the wrong thing is we use the scientific name. And the scientific name for firebush is Hamelia patens. But the problem with this plant is, is that, yeah, even non-native versions have that same name. So we need to know the variety name. And there are 16 varieties, but there's only one type that is native to Florida. And that would be Hamelia patens, variety patens. And I want to tell you the name of the variety that's most commonly confused with our native type, and that's going to be Hamelia patens variety glabra. 
I know, say that five times fast. G-L-A-B-R-A. -A. That is the type that is typically sold as native firebush, but it is not native firebush. Actually, it's kind of interesting. It is a hybrid between our native firebush, which is why it's so easily confused by the look of it, with not the varieties that are native to the Caribbean and South America and Central America, but actually with a type that's from Africa. Why? Who knows? Apparently it came around in the 1980s. So be aware, that's just kind of the background. Fun fact. But see, here's the thing. People can continue to mislabel things and mistakenly give you information that's incorrect. So the best way that you're gonna know a native versus a non-native version of Florida firebush is by the looks. And the things that we're gonna use to identify it are gonna be the flowers, the berries, the stems that connect to the flowers, then the stem, well, the green portion of the stem before it becomes woody and hard, and then the leaves. So all those pieces together are gonna give us a full picture of, yep, I got the native type. So as we go through this video and I'm showing you different pictures or videos, I will try to put a little title card down here that says whether it's the native or the non-native version so that it continues to reinforce for you what the look is. And if I ever do side-by-side -side pictures, I will always try to put the native on this side and the not a native on that side so that you should just know native, not native. Okay, let's get into so it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the flower. Now, when it comes to the size of the flower, both flowers are about the same size. They're about that half inch to inch range. The biggest difference is gonna, of course, be the color. The native type is going to be a coral red and the non-native type is gonna be yellow. That's the biggest difference you're gonna notice. Now, when they're in their early budding stages, they're both gonna have somewhat of an orangish look, but you'll notice that there is a yellowish still to the non-native type and the native type has more of an orangish color to it. So that's gonna be the first distinction of how you're gonna tell a native from a non-native. Next thing you're gonna notice between the native and the non-native version is the berries. The berries are what form after the flower falls off. And these are where typically eaten by our birds and then dropped throughout our yard so they can make firebush weeds. Remember, a weed is just a plant we don't want there. It doesn't mean it's invasive or bad. So the thing is, is that when those flowers fall off and the berries start to form, the berries for the native plant are gonna start off in that similar coral range, but then as they ripen, they're gonna actually go all the way to a blackish purple color. Your non-native type are gonna start off a yellowish color, very similar to the flower, and then they're gonna move into closer to an orangey color, similar to the base of these flowers. So the next thing that you're gonna look at for these plants is not really gonna help you. And this is the stem that holds the flowers and the very, very young leaves. And basically they're both gonna have a very similar reddish color. It'll just change based on whether how much light it's getting to it. Um, but their coloring is pretty much the same. And I don't think there's really anything that distinguishes them on this short stemmy portion. And I call that out because when you're at the nursery going to pick out plants, you may not have ones that have flowers and berries on it yet. So using that first portion of the stem is not gonna help you for that. So one of the ways that you can tell the difference next is the leaves. And the reality is, is that the biggest leaves are quite a bit bigger. Yeah, and they're broader. And I think that's one of the other things you'll notice, but that can still depend. If you're getting a young plant, well, who knows? Is it just not going all the way in? So one of the things you wanna do is flip it over and look at the underside. So we look at this main little, I don't know if you wanna call it stem. On the native type, it's got that reddish tone. On the non-native type, it is just kind of that lime green. So that's one of the other things you wanna look for. The next thing is has to do now, this is gonna depend on the time of year. So if you're in a time of year where it's like the drought time, the cooler times, and there's no flowers and berries, we also talked about that those wouldn't be there, but remember the leaves start to turn a purplish red. So we're kind of at the end of that season, so these were starting to fall off, but you can see that's a big difference, right? So you can see why we started to call it firebush too, right, with that reddish color. So, so the non-native type will not turn reddish at all or purplish. It'll just stay green and it'll go from bright green to dull green versus you'll get this kind of change throughout the year on your native type. The next thing is the texture of the leaves. These leaves are smooth. There is a very slight texture, but when you get a lot closer to the native type, there are fine little hairs on it. So if you touch it, it almost has like a very fine sandpaper feel to it. Now, if you keep rubbing it, it's gonna get smooth. So just FYI, cause I did that one time at a native nursery. I'm like, is, is, is the hairs there? Are the hairs there? And I would feel it, I'd be like, yeah, I think so. And then I kept going and then I was like, no, they're not there. Well, if you keep rubbing it, it starts to get smoother and smoother. So you'll have to go check a different location. But if you have good eyesight and you can get really close, you will see that there is a textural difference between the native and the non-native type. And that will continue on as we get to other parts of the plant. 
So one of the other things has to do with the formation of the leaf, also known as the whorl. So are they sets of two across from each other and sets of four, or are they always in odd sets like three and five? I've looked at both my native and my non-native type, and I haven't been able to distinguish a pattern. It looks like sometimes the non-native type has even and the native type has odd number whorls, but I wouldn't say that's a definite way to tell. I would use a lot of these other indicators as a way to know that you've got the native versus non-native. It's out there. I know there are people who are looking into it to see if that is a clear way for you to tell, but it seems like it's kind of iffy at this time. And another way that you can tell the difference between the native and the non-native is going to be those soft stems before you get to those woody hard stems. Remember we showed how the two different types of flower stems had both red? Well, both of them will be red they can have a little bit of fuzziness, but when you get to the soft stems, it is a clear difference. The native will be red and fuzzy and the non-native will be green and smooth. And it becomes a very clear distinction. So whether you have flowers or berries or we're not in a drought time, if you see fuzziness on the stem, that is a great way for you to know that you've got the Florida native firebush. And if I was gonna take all that information that I just told you and compress it down into two words that could help you figure out whether you had a Florida native firebush or the non-native, it would be red and fuzzy. Because <laughs> really that's kind of the biggest thing. So whether you got flowers or berries or not, if it definitely has an overall reddish tone from leaves to stems and it is fuzzy, you more than likely have the Florida native firebush. And now you know how to go and identify that Florida native firebush when you go to buy it from the store. But the next question is, firebush shrub or firebush tree? You need some landscaping ideas and that's gonna be our next episode. So to make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notification. New videos each week on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes a bonus video on Sunday. And while you wait, go ahead and check out the series on Florida native plants or maybe the series on mini series on firebush if you haven't caught up on all of it or maybe YouTube thinks you'll like this video. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.